Welcome inside episode 525 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba, alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains. And we're doing a show that I never thought we would do in the history of Locked On Senators. The owner, Eugene Melnick, has died at the age of 62. Yeah, rest in peace to Eugene Melnick and well wishes to all his family and friends as uh, this is shocking news to a lot of people. And the show must go on, though, and and we're here and we're going to talk about Eugene Melnick. And also, there's still a hockey team that's happening, regular season. So we'll preview the game up against the Nashville Predators tonight. Yeah, I think the one for sure statement you can make about Eugene Melnick is that man had a love and passion for the Ottawa Senators yes. and I'm sure he'll be looking down from uh, from up above uh, watching the game tonight and, and cheering for that Stanley Cup that he promised and I mean you've seen there's a lot of pieces in place that could lead to a championship team so no intro music today we're just going to get right into it it's March 29th Tuesday and late last night it was uh, 10.05 I want to say my time so like almost 11 o'clock Eastern time when the Ottawa Senators Twitter account put out that Eugene Melnick passed peacefully surrounded by his closest family. Of course, he leaves behind two daughters and, um, and many other people in, in his family. So uh, we are obviously thinking about them condolences to, to his friends and, and family. And I know Roger Lajoie, a mutual friend uh, that taught us, it's, it's going to be really hard for him. They were close, but what was your initial reaction when, when you saw that news come across? I feel like I woke you up with it. Yeah, yeah, I was I was sleeping, not expecting uh, any massive sort of news to happen. And yeah, we had kind of heard uh, rumors that maybe Eugene Melnick wasn't doing so well and was battling an illness. I'm still not quite sure what illness specifically it is. I, I'm not sure if you heard, Ross, but I, I haven't seen anything. No, no, me neither. Uh, specifically mentioned. So I it, hearing that he had died like, I read it five times. I, I couldn't yeah, wow. comprehend what I was reading. And you know, like it's trade deadline season. It's where all these fake accounts try to be heroes, but you don't joke about death. So I, I read it. I saw the check mark. I read it again. I clicked the link. I read the the long eulogy that was written in, in the Ottawa Senators on their website. And I recommend everyone go read that as well. And then after reading that, go check out Ian Mendez's article because this is uh, it's a very polarizing day but it's too soon to get into what's next for the Ottawa Senators what does that mean at this point it's just remembering the life and times and I guess a good place to go to to start the the show off really is how he came into the picture for Ottawa Senators fans and yeah. this is a few years before Dominic Hasek came to Ottawa so this is before you gave a care about uh, about the team but for me I was a diehard fan as a 10 year old and I just remember hearing from my dad like and the attendance was pretty pretty good like all things yeah. considered this was a team that drew well made the playoffs every single year i think they were on year six straight of making the playoffs and the owner had declared bankruptcy rob bryden um things were not going well players and missed paychecks and that, yeah, that's when you know you, that's when you know you're in trouble and there yeah. were interested buyers and this was on the heels maybe a few years down past but this was on the heels of the Winnipeg Jets moving to Phoenix and they had just had the expansion Atlanta was getting a team Nashville was getting a team these southern markets in the United States and other investors wanted to move the team out of Ottawa and I can't imagine growing up in Ottawa without having the Ottawa Senators there so yeah Eugene Melnick came sweeping in at the last minute and bought the team for 92 million dollars Pilsy with the arena attached the Forbes' latest evaluation had them at five hundred and twenty-five million. So you see, so that's a an ascending asset and value. And he he kept the sends here, and, and I I got to thank him for that. I mean, you can say what you want about how the relationship had been brought to a point of no return over the last few years, but when you're the guy responsible for keeping something somewhere, and then what is it? Eighteen years later, it's still there. I mean, you got to give some stick taps for that. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, uh, I would also say to everyone, go read Ian Mendes' article. I think it does a good job of shedding light on both sides of Eugene Melnick. And the thing is, whether or not you agree with how he went about things or how he said things, like you said, Ross, like, uh, Ross uh, this was a thing that he was passionate about. It was important to him. And 
he was stubborn and stood up for what he believed was right. Even, even if it came across in a brash kind of, uh, you know, aggressive way, but he knew he wanted this team to be in Ottawa. He had a plan for it to be successful. Uh, to, as uh, we famously hear about that trip to Barbados that Dorian did where they sat down and said, Hey, we have to change things. We pushed all in for Duchesne. Things didn't work out for us. So we got to find a way to rebuild and be back better than ever. And sure, it's been longer than he kind of initially laid out and what Sens fans had hoped. But now I think most Sens fans can confidently say the pieces are here. Like Brady's here, locked up long-term. He's the captain. The right choice was made there. Thomas Shabbat locked up long-term. Tim Stutzler drafted. Jake Sanderson just days ago, just days ago was signed. That's his last, last move. Exactly. That's kind of that kind of ties it all together with a bow. That yeah, Jake Sanderson arriving here was part of tearing this team down, but it's also part of bringing it back up too. And now he's here, and I, I think it's terrible that uh, Eugene won't get a chance to see this team be successful again. But he did what he could to keep this team in Ottawa and there was a lot of ups and downs and a lot of things going on with this hockey team, as we know, covering it on a daily basis. But the main thing is, is there's a hockey team here to cover. And for that, we're thankful. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm really just in awe and, and kind of speechless when I think of, of what my childhood and what my upbringing would be. And I yeah. know, I know there's a lot of people that are listening to this who did grow up in Ottawa before 1992 when the senators made their debut 10 years before Eugene Melnick came in to, to swoop in and save them from leaving. So uh, maybe it's, it's ringing on hollow ears when I say that I can't imagine growing up in Ottawa, but it's one of those where when you've had it your whole life, uh, you can't imagine it being gone. So um, yeah. Neither of us would be doing his careers probably Ross, honestly, like, yeah, I I feel like, especially over the last couple of years, like I definitely like the senators more than I like the NHL. I mean, that's that's probably the easiest statement that I can make on this show. But yeah, it, it really just sucks. Like two two young girls lost their dad way too young, like yeah. 62 years old. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, you, you think of Eugene Melnick, he's been around forever. Like I said, 18 years with the team and he's been in business much longer than that. And you kind of forget the age. And over the last probably half decade, ever since in 2015, when he had that liver transplant, yeah. he was literally days away from from being on his deathbed there. And he gets the transplant. I think ever since then, it's been kind of a slow and steady demise of his health. And and uh, it, it's just really sad to see um, that it's, yeah, it, it's over. And and again, like we're not speculating on what's happening with the team. That'll come in due time, due process. Uh, but right now, it's just kind of a, a shock and awe of, of like, what? Like, what? That, Eugene Melnick has died. That's... I mean, the, the words don't even seem real right now. And I'm sure that the guys in the room are, are all doing that. You see all the, the tributes pouring out on social media. Uh, Mr. Melnick, as he liked to be referred to. So maybe we'll pay him a little homage and call him that the rest of this show. But um, I mean, just from that, and Brady had a great tweet. Um, I'll pull that up here. If you want to say a couple of words, I'll pull up uh, what Brady had to say, because he's the leader of the team. And he was pretty quick on on the call there. Uh, last night to get get to Twitter and a guy who's not very active on Twitter I'll retweet the odd thing but he had uh, he had a really good good little two sentence thing here to say about him and just something I'll add too like we we worked for the Belleville Senators and Ross I think his, his vision moving the farm team from bingo to Belleville was a big part of this too a part of the rebuild trying to be successful too because there was an obvious kind of disconnect between the farm team and the home team. And there's an opportunity to bring it back to Canada, to bring it to a hockey town like Belleville that had lost their team in the Belleville Bulls just recently. There's an arena there waiting to be used. There was the convenience of being able to bring players from Belleville to Ottawa better. So that's another thing that that was a big part of our senators experience was experiencing the Belleville senators. And that's, that's something that he did as well. So I think, there's a lot of things that can be said about Mr. Melnick, but I think for now we need to kind of try to look at the positive things he's done and realize that uh, when you step back from kind of all the recent stuff, he, he kept hockey here and he kept a lot of people with jobs, with careers, fans, something to cheer about. Like 
I don't know. I think that's where I'll, I'll just kind of leave it is no matter what your opinion is of him as a person, his goal was for hockey to be in this community and he achieved it. Well, and you mentioned us working for Belleville. How about the fact that he continued to pay his employees once the pandemic started? We got a few extra paychecks out of yep. that, that not all companies were doing by any stretch. And uh, Matt Bosty put out a, a good tweet last night as well, um, saying that he, they sent food to hospitals and frontline workers. He offered up the CTC, which, of course, he owns. He controls what goes on there. They made that a mass vaccination clinic as well. And um, I didn't know this, but I assume it's kind of par for the course with what I was just saying about us getting paid. But uh, during the convoy protest downtown, um, the Send store had to close and they continued to pay their employees there, too. So um, far from perfect, a polarizing figure, but a guy who truly loved the Ottawa Senators. That's kind of where I think the legacy of Eugene Melnick is. I'm going to get to a... um, I'm going to get to uh, the Brady Kachuk quote here on the other side, but uh, we do have to let you know as well that tonight's or today's episode rather is brought to you by BetOnline.net. I know I'm going to be hammering the Ottawa Senators tonight. I know you, Mr. Melnick, would uh, would love to see that. So BetOnline.net tonight, where the game starts, and that's where you can find all your odds, props, lines. You can even get fun props. You know, like. When a coach gets fired, where is he going to land? You can pick teams like that. There's a lot of cool futures, a lot of cool lines with betonline.net. So you got to go see it for yourself and have some fun. Bet on the sense tonight. How long did he own the team, Pilsy? Has it been 18 years? 2003? 2003. So 19. 19, at least put $19 on the Ottawa Senators money line tonight. A little um, a little thing in the right direction. And We've seen Senators fans before be great. So rally around one of our own. Put differences aside. And it's a life lost. And that's where betonline.net can help you add a little to your wallet. And you know what? If the Sens win, let's take our winnings and let's donate it to a charity that we think Mr. Melnick would be appreciative of. So go to betonline.net. It's where the game starts. All right, Pilsy. So we are going to get to a preview of tonight's game. The show goes on in Nashville, 7 o'clock, or sorry, 8 o'clock. 7 o'clock game for me tonight. Very rare. Uh, 8 o'clock <laughs> Eastern game. Uh, as the Senators are in Nashville. Doesn't look like Mark Borbietsky will be in the lineup. Doesn't look like Ben Harper will be in the lineup. So there's only one Sens abroad, and there's also a superstar on the Nashville Predators. We'll get to that a little later on. But I mentioned that Brady Kachuk had some uh, great words, a true leader, the captain of the team, uh, quote tweeting the initial announcement uh, where the Ottawa Senators said, it's with great sadness that the family of Eugene Melnick and the Ottawa Senators hockey organization announced his passing on March 28, 2002, after an illness he faced with determination and courage. So Brady Kachuk writes, Mr. Melnick provided me, my teammates, and many Sens players who came before us with an opportunity to live out our dream. The Ottawa community will miss you greatly. Condolences to your family. Pretty well said stuff there by the captain. Yeah, and uh, TSN 1200 had a quote from him saying uh, when Mr. Melnick gave him the C, they sat and chatted for like an hour. And he said it just it meant a lot to him to have him say, we really think you're the right guy. Because the Sens didn't have a captain for quite a while. And they had Carlson for a couple of years, Spezza for that one year. There wasn't truly like, it didn't feel like they had their guy for quite some time. And Brady, most fans were in agreement. This was the guy. And I think... Uh, Mr. Melnick knew that as well, and he just <laughs> say what you want about him. Again, he kind of dangled the captaincy, saying we're only going to sign a, a captain that's going to be here long term. And yeah, you can say maybe that's a weird way to go about it, but he's a businessman, and he he got the long term captain that he wanted, and I think Brady's happy with it too. So. I just think that's a big thing to recognizing that um, the owner and the leader of the team kind of saw eye to eye on that. And that was a good moment. Yeah. Pierre Dorian was at, or is at the NHL GMs meetings. It's the first time that all the GMs are meeting since the pandemic in person. Wow, yeah, true. They did this virtually. So um, he was obviously emotional. He's a guy who uh, went to Barbados for that, that 114 or 112 page document. I think it was 112. Yeah, 112 pages of the rebuild. And um, so so with that to say, um, it's it's obviously tough for everyone who knows him. And Sens fans, I feel like, have dealt with a lot of loss. Right? You look back at 
uh, Mark Reeds. You look back at Brian Murray. You look back at now Eugene Melnick uh, to boot. So it's it's un- unfortunately it's something that we're not completely oblivious to on this podcast. And of course, with with Brian Murray, it's a little bit of a different circumstances uh, where how the universal feelings are towards him, but. I'm happy to say I don't think I've seen much, if any, on social media of people, you know, dancing on his grave or anything like that. And uh, it'd be an automatic block if I see that because, you know, there's there's just things bigger than hockey. You know, uh, we say that, oh, what, what was it that really set off the fans and, and myself included was uh, we were coming down. I was coming down from Toronto to go to that outdoor game. And as I'm in the car, I'm reading the day before. and It's like, wait. This guy's thinking of moving the team. Are you absolutely kidding me? And whether that was a negotiation tactic or what, that was when LeBreton was at the height of its its uh, tactics. And now, like, let's not forget, there's a billion dollar lawsuit going on about about LeBreton Flats right now. So the the da- there's a ton of of damage that needs to be swept up. But at the end of the day, um, I think I just keep going back to the fact that yeah, we're fans of the team, but does he really owe us? anything and i i say that hesitantly because fans are the reason why there is a team in the first place they yeah. should have i believe some sort of say but a lot of the some of the criticism was like oh he's he's not paying this player that and it's like it's not it's not really our business if, if he doesn't want to give signing bonuses like i'm not giving him a signing bonus so it's just one of those where that's why I feel like if there wasn't such a disconnect on other things, maybe that isn't such a big deal. And maybe it's just the market. I don't know, but I just think that right now is the time to be respectful right now is the time to understand that a uh, man lost his life. Again, two, two daughters in their early twenties yeah. students. One just completed her program at USC. The other's going to Queens university. Like they lost a parent way too young. And I think that's what it always comes back to for me. Yeah, and and that's the thing. Like you gotta um, you gotta think of the family and the days and week, sometimes weeks after a loss can be insanely stressful. And there's a lot of like you said, there's a lot of things going on in Mister Melnick's life that kind of need to be taken care of now, and they have to do all of that on top of grieving for uh, a father, uh, a member of their family, friends, all that kind of stuff. So. I think, like you said, it's it's nice that there's a lot of things that Sense fans could be coming out of the woodwork with and saying, oh, like, why are we honoring this guy? Here's a list of all the things that I didn't like that he did, and that's right. what we should be thinking of. It's good that people aren't doing that because that's really not fair. And I think, you know, we try to keep it positive on this show, and I think the least you can do is uh, tip your cap to a lot of positive things that, that he did, like I said, maybe he didn't go about it in the way that people want, but deep down he was doing what he believed was right. And you got to commend him for that. And that's, yeah, he's, he's, he's going to be missed because now, like, like you said, we're not going to speculate on what's going to happen, but there's, there's a team with, without an owner. Like it's pretty crazy. What, what happens here? Like not just, not just from a hockey stance, but from a business stance, like there's a lot of things to be figured out and it's going to be very interesting to follow along here. So we are wishing the family all the love and support that they need during this difficult time. Uh, The Melnick family, of course, I believe it's Olivia and Anna, the two daughters and uh, anyone else who's affected. I mentioned our, our uh, friend, Roger Lachois as well. So, all that to say, Eugene Melnick would be cheering for a big win for his Ottawa Senators tonight. So let's get to a preview of that game. But first, Pilsy, you've got a word from Rock Auto. Yeah, our friends at Rock Auto, they're making sure that you've got what you need to hit the road if you're going to the Sens game. Or, hey guys, we've been talking about that April 23rd meetup. It's not just a, a plan in the air anymore. You can officially go buy tickets Check out the link we posted at Send Central and get in your cars and get going. And if you're going in your car, Rock Auto can save you time and money. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. And the reason they're so successful is they keep their prices reliably low for every customer. You can count on that. You can count on brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet from rockauto.com. And the best thing is, is... 
It's no good having a product if it's not easy to find and easy to use their website. Well, Rock Auto makes it simple. Check out their website today at rockauto.com to find all the parts your car will ever need. Go to Rock Auto and see all the parts for your car or truck right locked on in their How Did You Hear Us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Check out rockauto.com. All right, Pilsy. So the Ottawa Senators are in Nashville. No morning skate. Brady Kachuk came out to speak to the media this morning. Of course he did, as you'd expect a leader to do on a day where the owner has passed away. Now, all that to say there is a hockey game tonight. And because there were no morning skate today, we assume they're going off of the practice lines yesterday, which would mean absolutely no changes. It would be yeah. Josh DJ Norris. DJ said that, no changes. Perfect. Uh, I don't have Forsberg stats up there. That's okay. Sogard will back up. Forsberg start. Do you want to run through this lineup real quick, Pilsy? Um, I'm just putting together the Nashville Predators lines as well. All right. Sounds good. So we got, like DJ said, just quickly, nothing changes. All right. Kachuk, Norris, Batherson, your top line. Even just reading that again feels so good, Ross. Formanton, Stutzler, Connor Brown. And then you got... Matthew Joseph with Chris Tierney and Colin White. I, I like that line. I know we'd rather someone with a little more pep in their step than Tierney, but I think Joseph and White kind of get that yin and yang of speed and then uh, some defensive uh, mindedness there. So I think that's good. And then on the fourth line, you got Tyler Ennis, Dylan Gambrell, and Austin Watson. I, I would even like to see uh, Ennis get a chance up with uh, Tierney and Joseph at some point. Maybe not the whole game, but switch it up like that. Just to try to provide a little more offense there. And then on defense, same thing. Brandstrom, Zub, love that they're staying together. Holden and Zaitsev, and Delzato and Travis Hamannick. So I, I like that Delzato and Hamannick are that third pair. I think they've been doing better than most third pairs have on this team this year. And then Anton Forsberg gets the start. Are you excited to see Forsy tonight? Yeah, I think definitely I would rather have Forsberg than Sogard. I mean, going up against the Nashville Predators, uh, that is a tough task, especially on the road. So I don't think that's the time to get for, uh, Mad Sogard in the net, sorry. So Forsberg makes a lot of sense here. Okay, before we get to Nashville, give me your locked-on player for the Ottawa Senators. My locked-on player for the Ottawa Senators is going to be Tim Stutzla. He has been lighting it up lately. Ross, I, I'm getting, uh, I'm pushing more to the side that maybe he actually will hit 50 points on the year. Wow. I, it's, it's hard uh, to stop him on this pace. Like, I'm just going to his game logs right now. And he's he didn't have any points up against Florida, but two points in Winnipeg. He had an assist in Montreal, a goal in Philly. Like, he's He's getting hot, and maybe he heard our show and wants to get on that. So I'm giving uh, my locked-on player to Tim Stutzler tonight. Let's see what he can do in Nashville. I'm looking forward to that as well. I'm going to go with Austin Watson because it's oh, a revenge yeah. game for Austin Watson back in Nashville where he helped the Predators get to the Stanley Cup final. That year that that they went – sorry, did they go to back-to-back conference finals? No, because it was Vegas-Winnipeg, second yeah. round. It was – anyways – the, the year there in the playoffs, he was a key piece. And I think that he had a couple of big goals, if I'm not mistaken. Nine points in 22 games, four goals included there as well. And get this, Pilsy, in 22 playoff games that year, he had 106 hits. Woo. Talk about banging bodies. That's what Austin Watson brings. And I think that this is going to be a good opportunity for him because he came to Ottawa during the pandemic, right? This is Is this the first time? This it is the first, first is. meeting. Yeah, definitely. And when's the last time the Sens played in Nashville? Whew. Yeah, it's been a while for the boys to get to Nashville. So that, that, that'll be fun for them, at least. I'm trying to find it right here. Um, it was one of the last games, actually, before. They lost 3-2 oh, okay. right before the pandemic, as we like to do, though. Can you tell me the Senators goal scorers in this game? Oh my God. It's it's not going to be good. One of them's Maybe. obvious. Neither's playing tonight. Drake Batherson? No. Brady Chuck. It's it's a tough one, actually. I'm I won't make you. It's uh Thomas Shabbat. Okay. Scored. That would have been my next one. How about a Thomas Shabbat goal assisted by Scott Sabrin? That you, oh, see, that you don't see every day. 
Um, and then, and Ron Hainsey had the other assist on that goal. And the other one, the leading point scorer in the Czech Republic League, Philip Schlappick got the yes. other goal. He's lighting it up over there. How's this for a line? This was a legitimate Ottawa Senators line. Rudy Balsers mm. between Philip Schlappick and Jace Howerluck. Wow. <laughs> It's an NHL line by definition. Uh, the Senators surrendered two power play goals in that game and lost by one. So, you know what? Just based on that, I'm going to go, you know what? Don't allow the National Predators penalty kill or power play to get hot. Senators have to do a good job. Um, and they also have to key in. The Nashville Predators are the Ottawa Senators of the Eric Carlson era. I, I truly believe that. Yeah. A few no, great offensive pieces, a very tough defensive unit. But they also have one of the best players on planet Earth. Like, do you know that Roman Yossi is on a 13-game point streak right now, Pilsy? Yeah, he leads the team in points, and it's not even close. Do you know how many points he has on this 13-game point streak? 16. 28. Oh, God. (laughs) 28 points on a 13-game point streak. He might be coming... For the Norris this year. I know everyone wanted to give it to Kale McCarr. The guy's no, got 24 it's gotta goals. it's got to be Yossi. It has to be Yossi. It's got to be, yeah. It's Especially un- because what he's doing. that decor has really changed in the last year. No Ryan Ellis there. That was a big part um, of their whole system. And d- did they get rid of one more guy too? No, they re-signed that home. But Yossi has been asked a lot of this uh, Predators franchise, and he's delivered. So I'm assuming he's your lookout player. He's my lookout player. And before I get yeah. yours, I just finished. Isn't that crazy? How many, That's how many insane. points? Wow. That, it's so impressive. Is there a forward on that pace? Only a handful of them. Because that oh, is wild. Man, there is, there's definitely not a Predators forward on that one. Matt Duchesne leads all Predators forwards in scoring. And he has 14 less points than Roman Yossi. They are the Senators of the Eric Carlson era. Yeah, crazy. and... Ross, that leads perfectly into my lookout player is Matt Duchesne. Uh, This is someone, when he came to Ottawa, Ross, sure, he wasted a lot of good uh, points on meaningless games. But I'm looking at his points right now. In 68 games the first year, 49 points. And then in 50 games, 58 points. Like, it was wild. But then Nashville finally got him. They wanted him for so long. They wanted him in the original Matt Duchesne trade, but they settled for Kyle Turris instead because they didn't want to pay the hefty price that Ottawa paid to acquire him. And then finally they got him in free agency and it didn't work out for them. Like 66 games, only 42 points. And then last year, 34 games, only 13 points. But Didn't he have like five goals or something? Only six goals. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. And like, sure, that's 34 games, but like, even if you prorate that, that is not very good to an 82 game schedule. Um, but he's back in a big way, and they needed this because their cap structure relies on him and Johansson to do well. And he's got 34 goals and 33 assists, good for 67 points in 62 games. So I- I'm watching out for Duchesne because there's so many highlight reel plays he had in the Sens jersey, and it's too bad it didn't work out because he was someone that want, legitimately wanted to be here. He's from the Halliburton area, so it was kind of close to home for him. And it, it sucks it didn't work out because he's still a really good player, so I'm going to be lo- looking out for him for sure. So he has played against Ottawa with As Nashville. a member of – oh, I thought it was with the Blue Jackets. Well, both because yeah. that was a dressing room trade where they were playing that His night. second trade. dressing – well, not exactly a dressing room trade. It was cross-continental, uh, the Sweden trip from Colorado, but that was the next team he played. Yep, they actually got both their games in that that first year he was in Nashville. He had two assists in the first game in Nashville, and then in the second game in Ottawa, no points. But both games, or sorry, earlier on in the show, I said that Ottawa was in Nashville um, late in that 2020 year. I was wrong. It was actually in December that they were in Nashville. They are in Ottawa. That to say, good time to pull up the Nashville Predators lines, and then we'll get Pilsy's key to victory on the way out of today's show. A sad show, honestly. Like Eugene Melnick has passed away, age 62, far too young for anybody. The Nashville Predators lineup goes as such. Matt Duchesne's playing the wing alongside Ryan Johansson and Philip Forsberg, another low key sick player. Second line, Mikhail Granlin between Ellie Tolvanen and Luke Coonan. The third line is Colton Sissons between Yakov Trenin and, um, Tanner Janot, undercover rookie, solid player. 
And then the fourth line, Michael McCarron, Nick Cousins, and Philip Tomasino. On defense, Yossi and Carrier, Ekholm and Lozan, and then Davies and Benning. So they're banged up on the back end. No Boro, no Dante Fabro either. So I'll leave that to you, Pilsy. And we're not sure, but it's either going to be UC Saros or David Riddick in goal. The Predators are 38, 24, and 4 on the year, 6 and 4 in their last 10. Their top goal, their top scorer, yeah, of course it's Roman Yossi. 81 points in 64 games as a friggin' defenseman. Um, what's your key to victory? <laughs> Sounds like he's more of an offenseman uh, with those numbers. Holy crap. But um uh Ross, can you pull the lineup uh, up once yep. more just for people watching on YouTube? My key to victory is Look at the right side of that decor. Like you said, banged up. Well, all right, I'm coming in on Yossi and Carrier. Which side am I going to dump the puck in here? Hmm, I'll probably dump it in on Carrier's side. Then now down to the next line, Ekholm and Lazan. No offense to Lazan, but Matthias Ekholm, I'm not giving him the puck, so I'm dumping it on the right side. And then the bottom pair, Davies and Benning. I don't know too much between the difference of those two, but... I, I'm seeing a, a pattern here, and I would say the Sens need to attack that right side of the ice because there's a clear weakness there. And I think there's not a lot of weaknesses on this uh, Nashville Predators team as they're good in the faceoffs, they're good special teams, they've got size, they've got elite skill. So that's one thing I can find is attack that right side. I'm going to make a levy lock for tonight's Ooh. game. The last levy lock that we had. Hit, it hit immediately yes. and doubled off even. It hit immediately. I will guarantee Oh, there's a fight tonight. Guarantee. Between? Mm, that's not as much of a guarantee, but okay, get this, Billsy. Get this. These are the top teams in fighting majors this year. So two teams have 20. Three teams have 21. Two teams have 24. Two teams have 26. Right? So you're getting the gist. It's all bunched up right there. Yep. The Senators have 27. The Ducks have 33. The National Predators have 45 fights to lead the National wow. Hockey League by almost 10. And they've got almost 20 more than the Senators who are in second place. So they drop the gloves often. Tanner Janot, the rookie, he's built like a middle linebacker. <laughs> he leads the National Hockey League yeah, in fighting legit. majors. He's got 12 fighting majors. Only three other guys have double digits in the entire league. And he's up there with 12 so keep an eye on he's Juneau. a good player too ross 22 goals this year yeah yeah he's sneaky he's one of those like fourth or fifth place finishers in in the rookie of the year i don't think he's up there with no. the siders the raymonds and and the um why am i forgetting uh, zegras uh, i thought you're gonna say buntings oh no we would have just ended <laughs> the show right there but uh all that to say he is a sick player austin watson with eight tilts and get this seven of watson's eight fights are on the road and the senators are on the road tonight so <laughs> probably yeah. a smart move for watson you don't want to be losing fights at home that's just not a good look so on the road is probably good um if i could give uh i know my locks are not as successful as yours but it's I, been I a while though we can we can reset the pillsy parlay event no no i'm out the parlay game the parlay was too much that was just an alliteration thing pillsy's parlay there was no there was no skill or anything good but I won't give you a lock, but I'll show you a pattern. The last... Uh, kills these patterns. Oh, kills these patterns. New Love segment it. alert. There wheel, you go, wheel. Ross. Play the foghorn. That's, that's why they pay you the big bucks. Yeah. So their last games, here are the scores. 5-4, uh, over hit. 6-1, over hit. 6-1, over hit. 6-3, over hit. 6-3, over hit. 5-4, the over hit. Are you getting what I'm saying? You got to smash the over for Smashville. <laughs> That's like, those are, and those aren't just like scraping over the overs. Like those are bashing the over. So expect a lot of goals tonight, even though it's uh, the Forsberglers and net. And if we see UC Saros, that'll give me some pause. But I mean, that's like eight games. I just rattled off there where the over hit. So Pilsy's patterns, check it out. <laughs> All right, that's uh, it for today from us. We're not going to put any intro or outro music on the show, just out of respect to Mr. Melnick. The Senators lost their owner. And I mean, yeah. that that is, it's um, it's a enormous news. Like that, it, it shook me for, yeah. for a while. I was just sitting on the couch, wasn't moving. Even my girlfriend texted me. She's down in Arizona with her parents. And apparently her mom got a notification on her watch that he passed away, like, it's uh, it's big news in the hockey world, and Eugene Melnick has passed away. And I'm sure in due time, in due time is the key here. 
we will discuss what this means for the future of the franchise, both in the short, medium, and long term. But right now, it's all about paying respect to the man that was 62 years old, leaving behind two young daughters. So we, we wish everyone the best. All condolences to the family, friends, everybody in mourning. I'm sure that the Senators, when they return home, for their next game, I believe Friday night is at home or no, it is in Detroit on Friday, Sunday, yeah. Sunday is at home against Detroit. Sunday. Um, I'm sure the senators will, will put on a good show. We, we won't be able to make it to that one. This is the type of game where, yeah, I thought about flying home for, for just to be there in the crowd, but we will be there on April 23rd and there is a link. So if you click our link tree, uh, we've got that in there. I added the one right at the top. If you want to buy tickets, we got two sections. So, if nobody shows up, we're just going to look like the biggest losers. Don't think that hasn't crossed my mind before. Billsy, we're just talking to our folks in this in this uh, forum. But in all honesty, we've already got, I think, 20 people who are locked in. Uh, it's group pricing tickets. So if you're thinking about going to the game, even if you hate us, you want to throw something at us, why not get a little discount on tickets? Billsy, that'll get be a great closer time. throwing distance too. Yes, exactly, exactly. So we're in uh, section 319 and 320, and we're now – now that we've set that, we've got the link up. People can be interested. People can come. Uh, we've got, shout out Luke Skinner, Send Central Citizen. Yep. Said, uh, shoot me a DM. He says he's got an exam the next day, but then he bought his ticket. So he's ready to rock and roll. He said that uh, nuclear construction, I don't know what he's studying, but whatever it is, it can wait because the Sens are hosting Absolutely. the Habs that night. And now the tickets are up. Next thing is planning the meet and greet. Of course, people who have their own tickets to the game, whatever it is, want to have some beers with everybody pregame, postgame, whatever it is. We'll get that information to you as soon as we can. Follow us on Twitter at Send Central for that or Instagram, LockedOn.Senators. Those are the two best ways to reach us. For Brandon Pillar, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been a heavy-hearted edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. We'll be back tomorrow. We've got your team every day.